Beowulf, second fit in modern English. So after night had come, Grendel went to the lofty house to find how the Ringdanes had disposed themselves in it after their ale drinking. Then found he there within a band of noble warriors sleeping after the banquet. They knew not sorrow, the sad lot of mortals. Straightway the grim and greedy creature of damnation, fierce and furious, was ready, and seized thirty thanes in their resting place. Thence he went back again, exulting in plunder, journeying home, to seek out his abode with that fill of slaughter. Then in the morning light, at break of day, Grendel's strength in war was manifest to men. Then was a cry, a mighty noise at morn, upraised after the feasting. The famous prince, the prince well known of old, sat downcast. Strong in might, he suffered, endured sorrow for his lieges when they surveyed the traces of the foe, the accursed spirit. That strife was too strong, too hateful and long-lasting. There was no longer respite, but after one night he again wrought greater deeds of murder, violence, and outrage, and had no regret, therefore, he was too deep in them. Then was the man easy to find who sought elsewhere more remote a resting place for himself, a bed among the outbuildings, when the hall warden's hate had been declared to him, and truthfully made known by a clear token. He who escaped the fiend kept himself afterwards farther off and more secure. In this way he was master, and strove opposed to right, one against all, until the best of houses stood deserted. It was a long while. Twelve winters' space the Shilding's lord endured distress, every kind of woe, deep sorrows. Therefore it was then without concealment made known to sons of men, sadly and song, that Grendel fought for a long time against Hrothgar, waved hate-begotten feuds, outrage and enmity for many seasons, continual strife, he would not make peace with any man of the Danish host, nor cease from murder of the councillors there, nor make a lawful compensation, and none need look for a handsome reparation at the slayer's hands. But the demon, the dark death shadow, ever pursued young and old, laid in wait for and entrapped them. In the endless night he held the misty moors. Men knew not where such mysterious creatures of hell go in their wanderings. So many outrages, severe afflictions did the foe of man, the fearful solitary, achieve in quick succession. He held Herat, the hall adorned with treasure, on the dark nights. He could not approach the throne nor receive a gift because of the Lord. He did not take thought of him. That was great heartbreaking sorrow to the guardian of the Shildings. Many a mighty one sat oft in council, sought for a wise plan, what it were best for men of courage to contrive against the sudden terrors. Sometimes they vowed sacrifices at the tabernacles of idols, prayed aloud that the destroyer of souls would provide them help against the distress of the people. Such was their custom, the hope of the heathen. They remembered hellish things in the thoughts of their hearts. They knew not the Creator, Judge of Deeds. They knew not the Lord God, nor truly had they learned to worship the Protector of the Heavens, the Glorious Ruler. Woe shall it be to him who is destined in dire distressful wise to thrust his soul into the fire's embrace, to hope for no comfort, in no way to change. We also be his, who may after his death day stand before the Lord and seek peace in the Father's arms.